You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Snary here from Drake Wing Gaming. This is me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale Grace's Path. <clears throat> so, guys, ladies and gents, before we jump right back into it, I was here to make a little quick announcement that the channel may be getting its very first sponsor soon. I uh, can't go into too many details right now, but uh, I got something in the works. You know, I I've, I've reached out, I've uh, talked to uh, someone, and. Uh, and things are in the works now, so we'll see how it turns out. <clears throat> but anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes to entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Yeah, let's see uh, what Grace has got in mind for this sailboat, huh? Funny, eh? Now that I'm strong enough to move it, what do I need to have a sail? What do I need? What need do I have for a sailboat? I've got my own rudder now. <clears throat> Her powerful tail swings back and forth. It's thick as a tree trunk and must be as long as she is tall. Why drag the wreck here, then? I have a sinking feeling I've inherited another project. Ooh, excuse me. I thought we could fix it up together. That way we'll not have to borrow anyone else's ship, as you put it. The next time you want to spend time with me on the open water. Admittedly, lazing about on a fancy yacht alongside Grace sounds like a dream. One quite detached from reality. It's a wonderful idea, but I'm afraid I'm not much of a shipwright. I'm not sure Grace understands just how much work we'll have to go into it, either. We'll learn together! There's nothing a resourceful young farmer and his mighty lady friend can't handle. Hmm. She stands up to her full height, showing off her ample growth, which remains unabashedly on full display, but for Grace's beloved yellow sash and the undersized kerchief atop her head. Uh, well, thank you. It's a fine gift. Hmm. Somehow Grace's carefree attitude towards clothes still flusters me, especially now that she is so big. Eyes averted, I thrust out Marion's carefully, carefully wrapped parcel. Ah, here, I, I come bearing gifts as well. A care package, courtesy of your sister. From me? Oh. <clears throat> Fish. Grace takes the package and opens it greedily. Hmm, sardines and olive oil, yes, excellent. Some crackers, canned tuna, very nice, and... <laughs> she unfurls the ensemble Marion selected. Are these Marion's? They don't look like her clothes. Marion's wardrobe would never fit Grace, not now. The, the skirt is Jessie, she told Marion. Blue is not my color, and it left and left it behind. The ankle-length garment will be lucky if it reaches Grace's shins. Aye, Jessie never much liked blue. No accounting for taste. What about this blouse? I hesitate to say, but suspect Grace is bound to find out one way or another. The blouse belongs to Gemma Tite. Gemma? Poor Gemma. The only lass in town with measurements to match Locke Finlay's own Leviathan. She asked Marion at the quilting party to mend it. You know how your sister's sewing reputation precedes her, but Marion seems to have lost Jimma's, Jimma's top in the laundry. I offer a conspiratorial wink, and Grace just about doubles over from laughter. My sister, now a prankster too? I must be rubbing off on her. Perhaps. At least she's not proud of scales. Not yet. Grace winks back, and I join in the laughter, suspecting Marion wouldn't be amused at all were she, were she to grow a tail. Oh, she looks fine in that. With some careful folding back of fins, Grace manages to struggle into, to struggle into the outfit. Oof! I'm doing this for you, Malcolm! I smile sheepishly, knowing she's not wrong. Perhaps I'm being prudish, but part of me worries if she casts aside her casts aside her modesty. That's just one less thing tying her to the human world. To me. How does it fit? Like a glove. A very, very tight glove. Well, what you think? For something so haphazardly thrown together, worn in ways never intended, the ensemble's surprisingly easy on the eyes. I think it's lovely. You think I'm lovely? Her words startle another laugh out of me. I'm amazed that I'm not terrified of her, much less find her attractive. But a nagging voice in my head says to be cautious. Not of my heart, but of my body. I do think you're lovely, yes. You're lucky I think you're pretty cute, too. Maybe later I'll let you find out if it's as hard to take these clothes off as it was to get them on. My chest fills with butterflies from a dozen conflicting emotions. Love, eagerness, worry, anticipation. The rational part of me simply wonders how it would work with a partner so large. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right, we'll take things at your speed, I promise. I had a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding in. I'm grateful we worked things out last night. The new Grace may look even more wild, but she's, now she's acting more mature than ever. I think we should name her the Chasing Tail. Pardon? This yacht, even at full sail you have a hard time keeping up with me. You always be chasing my tail. Well, what do you think? I roll my eyes. I think it's premature to be naming a boat we don't even we don't even know floats. 
Of course she floats. Come on, I'll take you for your first voyage. Oh, God. <laughs> she literally picked him up and put him on the boat. Before I can open my mouth to protest, Grace has lifted my body up and onto the deck. I say the ship looks even sorrier from up here. Grace, this can't be seaworthy. The deck has more holes than a wheel of Swiss. <laughs> and the cabin smells like Limburger. Maybe we, maybe we should name the ship after a cheese. Maybe we should just have a nice picnic instead of trying to sail this thing. Come now, where's your sense of adventure? Life is always an adventure with Grace. She grabs the old rope tied to the bow of the ship and begins to drag it, and me toward the water. Just imagine how she'll be when we've restored her to her former glory. You'll be sailing in style. Oh, the oak! Yeah. As she steps into the water, she trips over her own flippers, tumbling into the shallows. <laughs> ha! I'm still getting used to my own, my new feet. I shake my head as we laugh together. Grace must still be acclimating to her new body. Goodness, is there a lot of new body to learn? All right. If this boat sinks, I'm counting on you to rescue me. Oh, Malcolm, you're such a landlubber. What would you do if I weren't around? Be comfortably warm and dry, I imagine. Where's the fun in that? Now hang on. Okay. My hands already clenched the deck as if I were holding the timbers together myself. I say a silent prayer as I feel the vessel slide into the lock. The scraping sound of wood on gravel fades away, replaced by the light lapping of water, and by some miracle the ship becomes buoyant. See? I never doubted you. Grace smiles knowingly, and turns and quietly begins, sh begins swimming toward the center of the lock, her ship and its single sailor in tow. I half expect the waterline to creep up over the hull during her voyage. To my relief, the ship seems sturdy. Her grip loosens, and I lean back and find myself beginning to enjoy the cruise. It's been years since I sailed last, my gra with my grandfather. Happy memories flood in. Out on his small dinghy, we'd, see we'd sing sea shanties, old mariner rhymes that his own grandfather picked up during shipping voyages all over the world. I love the ones about Nelson's blood and the Spanish ladies. I have a few lines to myself, recalling Grandfather's pipe tobacco, that heavy, choking cloud scented of rust and cherry wood. Sometimes the smoke was as thick as the early morning fog across the waters. We would sing at the top of our lungs, watching the cliffside appear as the fog lifted. I can still hear his guttural voice tell me to breathe in the Scots air. It is the freshest in the world. Once the sun rose and the cloud cover had vanished, this lock was the most breathtaking sight a child could behold. My eyes scanned the perimeter of the water, taking in the high cliffs with their strong, cleaved gray edges and bright green moss. There's nothing but brilliant beauty surrounding me. But fancy sailing like that again, seeing my own landscape, basking in the serenity of my homeland, from new eyes with new purpose, and a new sailing partner. Grace is right. I should give repairing this old wreck a go. <laughs> you look relaxed, enjoying your maiden voyage. Grace, pe Grace head peeks out over the side of the ship, smiling. It's not quite the lap of luxury, but I do enjoy being with my maiden. And you didn't even have to get wet. She flicks a few droplets my way and we laugh, simply drifting together into the sun. I turn my head toward her, letting the daylight warm my other cheek. Thank you for thinking of me. This boat certainly is special. My foot dangles through one of the holes in the deck, disturbing a spider's web. Of course. When she's spruced up, you, c when she's spruced up, you can join me out here whenever you want. We'll go where the currents take us. Sky, the Hebrides, the West Indies. What happened to giving this tiny lock a chance? The reminder of yesterday's pledge makes Grace wince. I, I will. It's just the log feels even tinier now that I'm... Transformed. Changed. Grace nods, wide-eyed. It's not just size. It's speed and hunger, too. The lock's walls just feel more confining now. A wee lock for a big lass. Exactly. And what if I keep growing? A very real possibility, and one I hesitate to consider. I'm having a hard enough time wrapping my head around her most recent growth spurts. Do you like it, being so big? Well, Marion won't be able to hide the snacks from me on the top shelf anymore. I'm not sure you could squeeze into the kitchen in the first place. The words are meant in jest, but Grace grows quiet. It might have been more than might have been more right than I realized. I'm sorry, that's not what I It's alright. You're probably not wrong. I'm not offended. It just happened all so fast. Grace's speed. Ha! Yes. Since her changes began, I've only heard Grace focus on prospects of the new life ahead of her. Now that some doors are beginning to shut, or rather shrink, I wonder if she has any regrets. Not that we had much control over this whole mess in the first place. Did you miss any of it, the way things were? That house holds few happy memories for me. I don't know what to say. And so we stay silent. A sadness washes over her. My family had a share of issues, but it breaks my heart that Grace's home makes her feel so empty. 
I may have ignored her from time to time on those days when my parents were so busy or distracted, but I can never say I will ever say I was me ever say I was made to feel unloved. Again, I choke up, thinking about what life must have been like for Grace as a child, being made to feel as though their greatest loss was her fault. Unintentional though it may have been, her sisters and father made her feel so unwelcome that she remembers few or no good times past. They're there, I'm sure. They're buried on they're buried deep beneath many more instances of self loathing and distress. Fear that she was fear that she was unlovable, and at worst, unworthy of the life she was given. Even if they were never meant for it, never meant even if they never meant it. As mentions of Grace being the problem, words only only to have been spoken to have to be spoken once to have them seared into our memories forever. Even casual remarks seep in and linger. And every time those scenes replay in our heads, words echo, and our hearts break over again. I picture our shared empathy like an invisible thread that ties our souls together. When she aches, I do as well. Perhaps I will miss a few things, just a little. In my bed, my clothes, my shells and knickknacks, Jessie's voice, her jokes, Marion's cooking. You miss more than just Marion's cooking, right? Yes, but sisters aren't meant to live together forever. Father, he won't be at war forever. Living in him will be an impossibility. A sister's father, Owen, most of all I remember his gruffness. Coming home to a daughter who sprouted a tail. I don't know exactly how he'll react, but I doubt it'll be all sunshine and roses. My parents still had been here when I returned. My parents had still been here when I returned. I'm not sure how long I'd have lasted either. It's, it's part of the natural way of things. We grow up, leave the nest, find love. She winks at me. And then we settle down. The words tumble out, partly in jest, but partly in earnest. Is that what I want? To settle down? Is it so wrong to crave some sort of normalcy after life being turned upsy-turvy? Grace's face falls and she looks down at her large, half-submerged body. Malcolm, you're very sweet, but a lot's changed. I'm not sure what settling down would look like, what our home would look like. Certainly not one in the traditional sense. Good thing there's nothing, nothing about us that's traditional. Aye, that's for sure. Her smile anchors my spirits. My visions of our future are as unmoored as ever. Yesterday I'd imagined building a cabin by the grotto. A home on the shore we should we should we could share to bridge our two worlds. But it's beginning to sound like it will take more than lakeside living to bridge this gap. Are you still comfortable on land at least? Grace winces and expresses sympathy. I'm not sure. I know I can manage for short stints, but you know how my how my scales get when they dry out in these flippers. Nope. Feet Giving them feet pics, girl. <laughs> there you go, you feet people. There's your feet. Right there. There's your friggin' feet. Oh, excuse me. She flips herself underwater, showing... <clears throat> oh, I forgot. Oh, Malcolm, your voice. She flips herself underwater, showing off her enormous legs. Hmm. Not only are they awkward, but they have to uh, they have to carry so much more weight now, too. Where he's in the water, I feel light as a feather. And nimble as a dolphin. Exactly. There's a whole world out there that's mine to explore. The ocean. This is my new... This is my home now. We chuckle, but her words put a knot in my stomach. Any prospect of a semi-normal life has been torpedoed by Grace's latest transformation. How will we adapt? Grace must see the conflict in my eyes. Hey, don't worry. You can while away the hours on the water with me aboard the Chasing Tail. I turn back to the sky and smile. She's right. Doesn't sound so bad, apart from one thing. We're not calling her the Chasing Tail. Show this dandy vessel some respect. Hmm. Fine. She's your boat. What would you call her? Hmm. Kelpie. Kelpie. Let's name her Kelpie, after the water horse spirit. Great idea. She'll be your Hazel of the Sea? Aye, but hopefully a little less stubborn. Hmm. Cuties. Oh! Oh! Hello, Thumbnail. Hello, Thumbnail. We laugh and, we laugh and she takes my hand as we float aimlessly aboard the Kelpie. I don't know if this lifestyle is what our future holds, but right here, right now, their spite is welcome. Just the two of us, alone beneath the fair skies, floating in the middle of the loch. We speak of magic and marine life, family and friendship. We speak of love. My companion listens intently, interjects with a wit unmatched. Sometimes we both lay back in silence, simply watching the clouds drift by. Briefly, I forget that Grace is anything more than the bright-eyed young woman I re-encountered just a few days ago. <laughs> then without a word... Just a gentle plop, she dips beneath the, the lock, invisible beneath its mirror, sur its mirror calm surface. I'm reminded that I belong along above water, and she below. I sigh. What a life to be able to be so carefree. If not for Gran and her needs, I think, I think my, 
I think I might like to sprout gills and join Grace in her watery adventures. Although perhaps I've already experienced enough magic for one lifetime. My thoughts drift from ground to the chores that have piled up during my absence. A carefree life is not the cards for me. And like Grace, I've no sister to run the farm in my stead. Still, the chaos of the past few days, the past few days, few years really, have put things in perspective. The chores I put off don't seem as important anymore. Perhaps Grace is rubbing off on me more than I care to admit. Oh, lovely couple. Wonderful couple. Oh, I love the sunlight. Oh. My train of thought is broken by the sound of rhythmic splashes behind me. Someone is paddling closer, but it's not Grace. Grace doesn't use oars. Who is it? Hello? What is this? <gasps> oh my god! Ahoy, Master Campbell! I a fine pocket cruiser you have here! <laughs> I love the music. It just starts playing. No need to sugarcoat it, Douglas. She's seen better days. And she has. I've seen you float out here for some time. It's all well. You need a tow back to shore. His eyebrows point toward where the, where the mast ought to be. I'm certain he must wonder how I got out here in the first place. No, I'm well. I just, uh, just out for a float. Um, but that uh, brings you to the lock this fine day. Seeing the fisherman on the water is usually no surprise. But after this morning's close encounter with Grace, I thought for sure he'd be scared into taking shore leave for at least a day or more. The same as always. He's hungry as mouths to feed, but rely on me daily catch. Aren't the fish more active in the morn? I shut my mouth before I finish the question, already knowing the answer. Aye, oh, well, the fish weren't cooperating this morning. Master Campbell, bad luck and ill omens abound. Rex, the first time Douglas ever had a fish fight back quite so. Please, um, call me Malcolm. Ill omens, you say? Importance of a terrible magnitude. I warned you yesterday, lad. You shouldn't be out here, especially not today. The lock should be angry today. Grace didn't seem particularly angry. Indeed, I'm pretty sure I heard laughter echo across the lock. Just what as Douglas read into Grace's confrontation. The waters have been quite calm since I came out here. Not to question your sailor's intuition, but are you certain of your read? Douglas... Douglas's features scrunched, smoke billows from his pipe like a churning furnace. Aye, I'm certain. The imp I spoke of yesterday. She's no mere fu mere footh or mermaid. A wee baby vile fiest she be. Come again? A baby what? How anyone could mistake a ten foot tall giant like Grace for a baby is beyond me. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.